Okay, hello. I'm using R here on a Linux based machine, Ubuntu specifically. And we're going to look at finding a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval for the population median using the sample order statistics. And then I also have a video where I give a little more theoretical background of why this works, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But essentially, we want to find two order statistics, uh, R and S. So the R largest and the S largest values in the sample such that the probability the, of that capturing the median is 1 minus alpha. And uh, if we think about this a little deeper, so the median is the midpoint or the middle value. So 50% of the, of the distributions to the left, 50% to the right. And um, so each observation has a 50% chance of being less than it. So when we look at this uh, interval, the R largest and the S largest. So there could be several observations between YR and YS. And they could be below and they could be above. But the requirement is YR is less than the median. So we need at least R observations less than the median. Now here, um, there could technically be y r plus 1 less than the median, or y r plus 2, or any any number of them, just as long as the s1 is bigger. So we can have at most s minus 1 values less than the true median, and then this interval still captures the median. And so we're going to sum probabilities, binomial probabilities, from r to s minus 1 such that it is greater than 1 minus alpha. Okay, so that's a heuristic argument of why this works. And let's go through what is happening beside the scene, behind the scenes. So let's just pick a value of alpha 0.05, sample size of 7, and let's plot the binomial distribution. And that's here. So now we want to find values such that being, you know, the probabilities between those two values is at least 1 minus alpha. So to do this, I want to plot an accumulative distribution function going this from left to right and then sort of right to left. And that's what these next two commands do. They plot cumulative distribution functions. So it's right on the money, then they take this line segment and add it to that, and that's why that plot's there. Well, I need a, a, a line. This is the alpha over 2 line. So this probability that uh, x is 7 is less than alpha over 2, and this is less than alpha 2. But if we go one more, then the cumulative sum is more than alpha over 2. So what in the same way here. So what that tells me, if we sum this from 1 to 6, then this total probability is going to be more than 1 minus alpha. And that's what we want. So this is the R value. And this is the S minus 1 value. So S is 7. So we take the y, Y1, the smallest value and the largest value, and that creates an, at least a 95% confidence interval for the median, you know, which is sort of mind-boggling. So here's the theoretical. Um, so this function finds R. So it finds that spot where it just goes over. And then S, it finds the spot where it just goes over and then adds, you know, comes back one. So where this accumulative probability or this total probability is 1 minus alpha. So the theoretical here, if you take the sample size of 7, take the minimum and the maximum values in your sample, then that creates a 98% confidence interval for the median, which is pretty surprising that it's that much. So let's just do another quick example. Let's say 60. And then uh, here's the PDF, or probably mass function for the, the um, binomial. So let's create those little cumulative distributions in a, and then the alpha over 2. So at the point where it just goes over, that's going to be our R. And then at the point where this just goes over, that's our S minus 1. Because so, those probabilities, when added together, are greater than 1 minus alpha. So whatever that value is, 
so 21, 22, 22 or so, and then this is, you know, 38, 39, somewhere around there. I mean, it's hard to tell with the picture. That's why I created these two functions over here. So let's let's look at them. Uh, we take the 22nd largest value and the 39th largest value, and that is going to create a 97 percent confidence interval for the population median. Um, and that and that's pretty surprising okay, to me. So let's let's here's a, a quick example. Let's say we do 22 and we go through the rigor morore finding it. Notice that that's just barely over on that case. So if if we want to strictly be 95% or more, then we have to take the values of of the sixth largest and the seventeenth largest, and it creates a ninety-eight percent confidence interval, and and that's because of the way that it's discretized. But if we're if we want to relax our that we have to be ninety-five percent or more criteria that we just want to be close to ninety-five percent, maybe we can say alpha is point oh six, and we can run this again, and we went from. 6 to 17 to 7th largest to 16th largest and let me make sure of that yeah 6 and 17 and now we've just decreased our interval length we've made it smaller but what's the um, the theoretical coverage is 94.7 so if we take the seventh largest, sixteenth largest, we've created a ninety-four point seven or ninety-four point eight percent confidence interval for the population median. And this is for any population that we choose. And to me that's pretty pretty neat. Okay. So I'm gonna do this for a sample size of nine, because that's gonna help us in our example below. So if we take the second largest and the eighth largest in our sample, it creates a ninety-six percent confidence interval. So I've stored those values in R and S. So here's an example in DeGroote's probability and statistics book, second edition, where they look at investigating the miles per gallon of a car in a typical urban driving setting. So they test it nine times and they come up with these miles per gallon values. So let's find a at least a 95% confidence interval for the median miles per gallon. And, and in this setting, we already went through the thing. We're going to take the second largest and eighth largest, and it's going to create a 96% confidence interval. So we need to load the data into X. And then the sort, it, this is such a neat function. There's a subcommand called partial. And you put in, you can put in one value or two or three. And what it does is it only sorts the rth value and the s value of this and the rest it doesn't matter and then I grab those two values and that's the rth largest and the s largest which in this case is the second largest and eighth largest so this is is a 96 percent confidence interval so 8.3 to 20.4 is a 96 percent confidence interval for the median miles per gallon of this car in a typical urban driving setting. To me that's so exciting that you can even do that. You don't need to know the distribution of this data because it's irrelevant and that's one of the beauties of non-parametric statistics. So let's go through some quick simulations here and then then we'll call our quits. So first of all I have to create a function that finds these uh, the R and the S of a huge matrix. So this matrix, the number of columns is going to be the sample size. So first we're going to take a sample size of 22, so the number of columns is 22. So each row represents a sample. And then we're going to, the number of rows, we're going to make 10,000. So we're going to replicate a sample size 22 10,000 times. And that's what this function is going to do. So then, um, this first part here is just create, uh, finding out what R and S are when alpha is 0.05 and N is 22. And then what comes next is so fascinating. We're going to just randomly select data from a normal distribution, from a normal or standard normal, a normal distribution with mean 22, standard deviation 22. We're going to randomly sample from a chi-square distribution with 22 degrees of freedom. 
we're going to randomly sample from an F distribution, a beta, a log, a standard log normal, and we're going to see if the coverages are are good. So here we want to highlight our code to run, and then it's just going to go through. It's calculating and and seeing how many confidence intervals match, and it's finished. And so here, a theoretical confidence interval based on 22 is a 98 point three percent coverage so when we're in a standard normal we we achieve slightly more slightly less than this standard deviation 98.5 98.4 and a f and a beta was a 98.2 and a log normal was 98.3 so it didn't matter what our underlying distribution was with a sample size of 22 and we use cutoffs of six, the sixth largest and the seventh largest in our sample, it created a 98.3% confidence interval. That to me is just so exciting. So let's do this just one more time. Let's do a hundred and uh, sample size of 122. And then let's run these simulations where it goes through and samples from each of those. So it's doing is creating a matrix of 122 columns and 10,000 rows, and then it calculates, you know, the the confidence interval that we're creating here. Oh, and it's finished. And our theoretical confidence interval is 96.3. If we pick the 50th largest and the 73rd largest of our sample of 122, and in fact we met all in 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 all these randomly chosen somewhat distributions um, it's met anyway that's so exciting um, that's all I have for today I hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe to see more of these videos um, if you have any questions leave comments and I will talk with you later